Okay, in this uh, tutorial, we are going we are going to look at um, a thing in Mod X called form customization. Uh, you can use form customization to do quite a lot of things, but for our specific uh, usage, what we want to do is control what template it, um, is received by the child resources uh, whenever you're setting up a resource instead of a inside of a container. Um, in Mod X, it, uh, Mod X uses what's called inheritance whenever you create a new uh, a new resource under a container. What do I mean by that? If you look at stretch wrapping machines in this particular example, if we look at the template that it's using, if I just come over here and do a quick update and look at it, it's using the product template. So if I create a new child resource under the stre uh, stretch wrapping machine here, let's go ahead and do that. The naturally should res uh, the, the new resource that we're uh, creating should have the template uh, product. Okay, so everything works uh, the way it should. Uh, that's the way it, the default is in Mod X. But here's the problem. Um, if these resources right here need a different template, well, we want them to receive the correct template when you set up uh, these new resources. And so let's just do a quick update and see. These are using a template called Machine Profile. The problem is, if you expect whenever the client sets up that you're turning the site over to, whenever you expect them to, to select the right templates, it's just going to get really confusing for them really quick. So you kind of have to make sure that you're, you know, pushing them in the right direction when you're, they're setting up templates. Um, and so here's how you go about doing that. How do we set this up? So that if someone adds a new resource under stretch wrapping machines, it's automatically going to get the, uh, the correct template that we want, machine profile, not the product because the product template has its own unique layout. If we come over here to the site, this one has its own unique layout for the products. But if we go to one of these individual product pages, you'll see it has a completely different layout. Now in the past, what I would do when I would write these uh, ModX templates is I would come over here to um, these product pages like here. You know, This is the uh, product page right here, and it has its own unique code. And then if we look at the high profile, which is the product page here. It would have its own unique code. And so a lot of times what I would do is write conditional statements within here like, oh, okay, if this is the ID, then have this template, or if this is not the ID of the parent, you know, then have this template. Uh, it gets really messy. It makes for, um, you know, just a slower site. And when you start writing all these inline conditional statements for templates. So here's how you get around it. Uh, if you come over here in Mod X and you go over to Security and you go to Form Customization, let's take a quick look. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new profile. It's kind of like a new rule, so to speak. So we're going to call this one, and I already set this up in here earlier. Let me delete that. Let me, I was just playing around set that up earlier. Okay. We're going to call this one, um, you know, we'll call this uh, Product uh, Page uh, Inheritance kind of give a little description here. Um, let's see, we'll call this, we'll just put in description. And this is good to do because sometimes on large sites, you'll start getting a lot of form customization rules. And it gets really tricky. You start looking through them all and you're like, whoa, which one controls what? It gets really confusing. So I just write a little description so I can understand the future of what's going on. Uh, and I would write something like, you know, how to change um, the template, uh, uh, you know, the templates, um, to avoid or um, how to change the templates when creating a new resource. Again, you can put whatever you want. That's just for your own future reference. So we'll go ahead and save it. And I'm going to come over here and I'll right click and click edit. Now, what we have to do is we have to create a couple of rules. One for when you create a new resource and one for when the individual updates the resource. I always do the create resource first. And the action in this case is going to be create resource. And the description, we can leave that one blank. The template is going to be the product page here because we're working on this product template. This is, we want the ch uh, child resource to have the product template. So we're going to be defining these values for this template. Now, these two fields right here, constrain field, this is where you define um, the uh, different. In, in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be defining a field for the parent. In this case, it's stretch wrapping machines, a parent. Uh, whenever we create a new resource from the parent, um, we need to uh, make sure that we keep um, you know, a particular field 
or the template locked in at a certain template. We want to change the inheritance rules. So in this case, the constraint, the parent in this case, is, uh, has an ID of number nine. So we're going to set parent and we're going to set it uh, ID of nine. Okay, now we've created it, so let's go ahead and right click and edit it. Uh, I'm going to be kind of going fast to this. Uh, and again, there's so many things you can do with form customization. I'm just kind of tip of the iceberg, but this is a real important one that I use a lot. I mean, you can control template variables, uh, you can, you know, add user groups, all this different stuff. But for this particular example, what we're trying to do is we're trying to force a template to have a unique ID that's, uh, you know, we wanted to inherit the product. Um, let's see, actually, is it machine profile? Oh, see, I've already begun <laughs> to set these up wrong. We want the child to receive the uh, machine profile. So we're going to put in 11 because we're going to define, if you scroll up right here, this column is default value. So we wanted to find the default value as 11. Now earlier, I think we set up a, uh, let me see, I'm going to save this real quick. Let me close this because I want to go back and check something. I think we set the wrong template earlier. We might have, let's see. Yeah, see template. Let me, uh, let me edit this real quick. We had set the template to be product. In reality, we want it to be machine profile. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that. Okay, so let's double check what we did. We have the template that we're working on is machine profile. The parent, whenever it has a parent um, equal to number nine, in this case, this container right here, we want any time we create a new template to have the template number 11, which over here is, oops, machine profile. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a test run and see if this works. So, again, this uh, has a template that's equal to product, which I believe has an ID of nine, um, or five rather, has it pro uh, five. So let's create a new resource, and we'll go to create a document here, and um, see if it works. Yep, sure enough, it's now receiving machine profile as a template, which is what we wanted. So. What I'm showing you again here, and just to explain it, again, high level, is this is how you can control what template is being received whenever you create a new uh, resource under a particular container. You're basically working around the default and canceling out the template inheritance, and then you're defining what you want for the template to be, what uh, ID it has. So hopefully that helps explain it.